Welcome! In front of me is a Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus and today I will show you a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this phone. So, to get started, let's open up our settings and I'm gonna begin with the uh, adaptive sound, I think that's how it's called, which we can find under sound and vibration. Scroll down to uh, sound quality and effects and then adapt sound. I run to tap on the text itself and then select allow. We can enable it from here. And what this is, it's basically a tailored equalizer to your hearing. Now, it might do a little bit more than just be tailored to your hearing. It might be also tailored to your uh, headphones or earbuds, whatever you use. And because it does technically create its own equalizer based on if you can hear specific sounds that the phone will play through your sound periphery, it might boost up the sound quality of your periphery. So if said, for instance, earbuds have some kind of poor uh, mids or low ends and you just cannot hear them when the phone is trying to test it, it will boost it up higher, meaning that now these earbuds may actually be able to produce this kind of sound. Now there's a couple of pre-made ones, but these are based on an age range and the typical hearing loss based on that age range. Uh, so what I recommend doing is just creating your own one, which you can do right here at the bottom. Now, when you're doing this, do be mindful of this. The sounds that you'll be hearing are super faint, so you need to be in a uh, quiet environment for you to be actually able to hear this. If you're like outside in the city, there is no freaking way you're gonna hear that. So just bear that in mind. Anyway, uh, moving on to the next option. It's going to be under the display, and that is the light and dark mode. Uh, these ones will be a little bit more common. Uh, now, we do have the option to change it to light and dark mode throughout the setup process of the phone, but what you actually have here is the dark mode settings, which allows you to set it up on a schedule, so it will switch between light and dark mode, either based on sunset to sunrise or on a custom schedule. So, it basically gives you best of both worlds. Now, moving on to the next option, uh, it's going to be the motion smoothness below and we have two different options we have the adaptive sound and oh, adaptive sound sorry uh, adaptive uh, refresh rate and the standard one uh, now the adaptive one utilizes 120 and i think it can go as low as one hertz uh, to preserve battery life, while the standard will be running at 60. Now, uh, in more circumstances, I do recommend using the 120 or the adaptive because it's just going to be better in almost every scenario. But if you tend to do a lot of screen on time uh, where you don't need that high refresh rate, maybe like reading books or stuff like that, and you just tend to like, I don't know, maybe fiddle around with the pages, uh, then I would recommend changing it to standard. This will give you a better screen on time battery life but when you're not using the screen obviously it will not affect your battery longevity whatsoever now scrolling a little bit further down we have the adaptive color tone which is uh what i guess i could describe as apple's true tone so samsung just decided to copy it um it seems to be working similarly to that uh, it just makes the display look a little bit more natural depending on like what lighting you're in so anyway, moving a little bit further down, we have the screen mode. Um, this is basically the color temperature of your display. Samsung always uh, uses the vivid mode. And I personally find it to be way too overdone. And this is very apparent when you look at this image right over here. Uh, it's not as egregious with the uh, copy of the true tone right here. But if you turn that off, uh, some of these images look absolutely atrocious. Now, they do look good when it comes down to just like brief look and for instance looking at the phone in the store, uh, it does look like the colors are popping, it is very eye-catchy, so I understand why Samsung utilizes this, but for day-to-day -day use, I personally like to have it set to natural, which tones down the colors uh, to a little bit more reasonable level. Uh, and obviously it might not look as glamorous in certain pictures, for instance like this one. Uh, but it's just personal preference. Now, going back here, uh, we can scroll down a little bit further and we'll find, there we go, Edge Panel. Uh, the panel is always enabled by default and it's this kind of white bar right here that can pull out. There we go. 
and it will show you a couple applications uh, added by default and also a couple that will cycle through based on your most recently used applications. We have also the option to open up your entire like app library and add some more applications to this panel right here. Now the panel that you can see right here can extend way further. It can hold all of your applications if you want it to and it will just become scrollable at that point. So there we go. So I go back you can see I can now scroll it up and down. Now uh, outside of you being able to access your application quickly from here you have the additional uh, benefit of being able to quickly split screen, split screen applications and also open, open them up in a pop-up view. So let's just say I want to add YouTube on top, just drag it to the top, drop it, and boom, it's done. Then, let's get the panel again, and let's find something like our browser, and grab it, link it out, drop it in the middle, and this will open it up in a pop-up view. And I can move it around, I can also shrink it or make it bigger, and move it to the side to get rid of it. And all these are fully functional. Additional option that you can utilize now is when you open up two different apps like this, um, by default they will not show up right here unless you close them. So you can see, see there's nothing there. I do have the combo of like YouTube and browser. Just want to point that out. But anyway, if I close this now, you can see that it appears now with the YouTube and settings, which was just open. You can grab this and drag it to the bottom, drop it. And now I have this app combo uh, accessible to me as well a quick one so I can just open these two apps all the time with a single press which is pretty neat now anyway going back to the settings I'll just get rid of this and here we also have the navigation bar and in here you can change to gesture navigation if that is something that you want to use it removes the buttons from the bottom and subs them for the gesture bar now, one thing that I'm going to point out, uh, Samsung decided to be a lazy piece of garbage and, uh, you know, for a phone that costs as much as these devices cost, uh, I consider this to be an absolute middle finger to the consumer. But Samsung used to have an option that allowed you to hide this bar. It would just become, well, it wouldn't become invisible because Apple uh, apparently doesn't know how to develop correctly things. So if you would enable this, it would shift the bar a little bit off the screen. Uh, and that poses posed some challenges problems for third-party launchers where you'd swipe up and just the swipe up didn't register because it was a little bit shifted to the bottom so it was a it needed to be like super precise and slow and if you just by a pixel missed it somehow it wouldn't work and it was pretty annoying uh, in my case I would end up sometimes swiping three times around before it actually accept the gesture uh, something that doesn't happen when it's actually showing you the bar uh, but I'm saying that because Samsung, instead of fixing that bug, because let's call it, it was a bug, uh, they decided to completely get rid of this fun uh, function of hiding it altogether, instead of just changing the opacity of it, like a normal developer should have done. But in any case, just wanted to point that out because it's something that I really would like to use, but uh, now Samsung just decided, no, you're not going to use it at all, because we don't bother spending any kind of money to improve this, we're just going to get rid of it. Anyway, um, I think that's basically everything that I wanted to showcase. So, with that being said, hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.